Want to get down to business and start breaking yeah, this bad boy down uh, so we can apart. Show? Let me see if I get this camera lined Surgery. up right. Surgery, I should time him with a watch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I have to right. let you guys know, too, full disclosure here, uh, Topher's normally used to doing it so that the X7 is facing towards him. So now this is upside down and backwards. Yeah, it's upside down. So we'll just, uh, I mean, basically, the only thing, you know, holding this together, you know, everybody knows that the Tipman is a clamshell design. Uh, some people love it. Some people hate it. Uh, I, I I like I like it for for several different reasons, but there are some things I I didn't like about it until I got this, and now I'm I'm thrilled. You got your five main pins here. Is that five? Yeah, five pins. All right, so we slide the barrel off, and then you just pop these two body pins out here, and you've got your foregrip. And this is where you can attach any other X7 foregrip would slide right back on there. Gee. You pop your two rear pins off. And this is for your back plate or your stock if you have a stock. And this is my favorite part. You don't have any shit flying out the back. Yay! It's, it's, it's not, it's, it, not pins and springs and all kinds <laughs> of stuff. You pop this last pin off. And this is what, you know, these two pins are what holds the grip on. And then we'll pop this, slide this down. Now you'll see the guts of the grip. There's the airline connection right there. Can you see that? Let me get mm -hmm. that close. Okay. You'll notice there's no sear. Instead, this little, this is a little toggle that pops up and down. That's what is activated by the solenoid here. So there's nothing to catch the bolt. I'll show you the bottom of the bolt here. You got a little firing pin in there. That's all that's being tapped as you fire this marker. And I'll show you that bolt and I'll show you how easy that comes out. Nice. Um, and then one other thing we like too, if you want to really go crazy and pull this part apart, you can get the uh, trigger out and this doesn't fall apart anymore. It's held together a lot more tightly than the uh, nice. previous models. There's your solenoid and your other parts in there. Always afraid of, you know, doing that, and then all of a sudden these tiny little light gray specks would fly out into my big shag carpet. I'm like, oh, I'm fucked. Yeah, that, that kind of stuff happens. <laughs> big so, shag carpet. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> so, so now we've got, and, you know, we can pop this mag off here. So let's just get this looking pretty. We'll get organized here. All right, so we got our grip. We got our back plate. We got this. And then this is, so this is your receiver. And then you just pull this little pin out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that holds the bolt assembly in. Flip it over, disconnect your cyclone air hose, and then this is my favorite part. This is the magic. This is the new bolt. And this is where everybody wants to see you zoom yeah, way cool. in and check this out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's that's the bolt. There's lots of shots of this on our website. This is the bottom here. Okay, this is where your air connects in here. This is your firing pin stuff here. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. This is your regulator on the back. Your spring return is your stainless steel front bolt right here. Mm -hmm. That just slides right over this aluminum power tube. This whole valve assembly is aluminum, and it's with this its this uh, Teflon-infused anodizing on this body here. Hmm. Uh, that was from directly from the, uh, the, the guys at Titman. This is also your velocity adjuster here as you... Uh, as you, uh, I'll show you how that yeah. works in the marker here, too. Let's show it on the outside. I mean, here yeah. it is on the marker right here. Yeah, this is one lower. on the marker. You just put a wrench in there and you go up or down. No, it, you can't do it with a stick in the field. You actually you have to have something rigid in there. That was one of the questions was, could you do that? Could it accidentally loosen up if you're messing uh, around with it? You, you torque twist it or whatever. with your thumb. You couldn't twist that with a toothpick. You really got to jam, jam a wrench in there. It's a pretty tight turn, but it's not, it's not obnoxious. It's very cool. Um, and then this is the best part. Once you, uh, I mean, you do one screw on the cyclone to take that off, and that just fits just like the other cyclones do. Incidentally, the cyclone's further back. It's back about an inch and a half, and the whole receiver is about an inch and a half shorter than the, uh, than the X7 previously, too. So it's got a more compact feel to it, which is the one reason why the one stock, the folding stock, uh, doesn't, isn't compatible with this right now, because when it folds, it's actually too close to the cyclone. Uh, but they are making an adapter to go off the back to push that out like a half an inch and that will pull it back enough so it'll lock close. Uh, the other stock, the air through stock is coming out with an adapter for that too. So that'll work. <coughs> you Slinkly. Your cyclone off, and then this is the best. This is the aluminum receiver. Now normally you'd have to, you know, break this in half and take out your cocking handle, your spring. Now you can just rinse this off. You don't even have to break it apart. This is nothing but aluminum and a, and a, uh, uh, you got your detent in there, but everything else is just, uh, you just wash it off if you want, dry it off real good. And then we'll just slap it back together again. And that takes uh, a little bit less time than it did to pull it apart. Beautiful. Yeah, that's uh, one of the things that Slinky Aru was just saying. The main body can just go in the sink with, with dish soap. So it's just really easy to clean all the, the guts. Do you actually yeah. have to go and yeah. mess with the power tube or any of that, the new bolts or anything at all, or just stays in that block? 
everything stays in this in this valve thing here. Um, I mean, we have taken this apart. It's uh, it's fun inside. Uh, you basically <laughs> have your regulator uh, in here, and there's a there's a pin and a spring inside, and then you've got your uh, uh, some kind of plate here. I don't know the real inner workings of this, mm -hmm. but then there's the spool valve inside, and then you have the valve chamber, and then you have your front bolt, and uh, that's pretty much it. There's there's not a lot of uh, uh, internal moving parts in here, so. Um, the, the beauty of that is that uh, this is the only part that really moves, and it only moves about, you know, uh, about that much, and it's light. It's a stainless steel, but it's got a nice nylon uh, insert, and it, uh, uh, it's basically a, a very low kick. There's, you know, it doesn't have that huge Tipman bolt flying yeah, back and oil. forth inside of it. Nice. It so, reminds so that, me. That adds a lot of. Uh, Let's get them together. Yeah. Put yeah, this we'll stuff put back some, together. Let the other Chris chat. We'll have him so that you can get back to work. And some of the other questions we're getting, everybody, of course, is okay. asking the, the question that you will have to take a piece of paper and read, which is uh, about the difference between this and an auto mag and e-mag and all that other stuff, too. And um, so. You want, to, you want to talk about that for a little bit? Yeah. All right, put that back together. Um, I'll, I'll read. I'll re I have I have some notes here that I've been doing a lot of research, and I saw a couple of posts online, and this one really uh, uh, explains it best. Um, you know, the the the, the key, the, the the real similarities, and at the fact that they're both blow forward spring return. Um, uh, the 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 differences, as I understand them, because I I don't do auto mags, um, is that the the auto mag bolt. First of all, it's it's got a sear. And it's also under constant pressure. And when you pull the trigger, the sear, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, you know, you hit the pin, which cuts the air supply off from the regulator. Then the sear is dropped, and that lets the bolt fly forward under pressure, uh, releasing the contents of the valve, pushing the bolt out of the barrel, uh, or the ball out of the barrel. Uh, and then, you know, the spring returns that bolt. In the flex valve, um, uh, in, the, in the Tipman Phenom, uh, when you pull the trigger, the firing pin is moved up by the trigger, and it dumps a small amount of air from behind the internal spool, and that's got the same pressure on both sides. And then it shifts back to dump the contents of the, of the valve chamber into the power tube, and that pushes the bolt forward and fires the ball out. And then the mainspring returns the bolt, and the valve recharges uh, when the trigger's released. So, uh, you know, it makes it, uh, it makes it efficient and consistent um, since the same amount of air is fired every time. There's no power tube spacer uh, or spring O-rings to fuss with, and uh, and no sear to wear out. So those are the those are some of the differences and some of the what what we perceive to be the benefits of uh, of this new valve design. Uh, but but really, we're just you know more than anything, we're thrilled that you know a marker as ubiquitous as the Tipman, uh, you know, company that's just everywhere. Everybody's held a Tipman at one point or another is putting mm -hmm. out a low pressure. You know, electro pneumatic marker that's got some some ruggedness, uh, a lot of accessorizing here. I mean, you can change shrouds, you can change stocks. Um, there's not a lot of integrated stuff into it, like some other Milson markers that are out there right now that you really can't uh, can't do a whole lot with. And uh, and it's just it's a lot of fun. You know, we just we we like it. Beautiful. A uh, slinkidarity went over that a little bit. The sl the cyclone is more or less the same. It's moved a little bit, but they've upgraded a lot of it. Uh, shaved yeah. off the edges. Just really. Yeah, see, see it out how, further, how much know. further back it is. Let me hold these up. See, it's a little bit further back. There, can you see that? Yeah, Chris or Simon, you guys want to grab one of those? <laughs> <laughs> some work here. So. Right, just put them flat, up, put them flat down here. Yeah, and then that, basically yeah. you can see it from the tip here. Well, I mean, the barrel's a little longer. But if you look, look at the actual the foregrip and where the cyclones are, if you tilt that down, not to mention the fact that the aluminum uh, versus the uh, magnesium alloy of the original X7, the aluminum makes the phenom lighter. Some people don't, but every person I let it hold, it let feels, them hold it, it, yeah. it, it feels a lot lighter too. And it doesn't feel plasticky. The uh, some of the people were complaining about the feel of the uh, of that magnesium alloy, but uh, you know, I, I again, we, we're just we're just happier with the newer model at this point. You want to air some of these up? And, yeah, uh, let's check them out. Yeah. See see all they how they flow and how they run. We're gonna do that safety.